The definition of biological fitness is very simple and clear. Better survival, longer life. By taking advantage of stress rather than falling victim to stress. Starvation and hardship, I, I know. Who wanna be under that pain? Well, your body wanna be under that pain because it's thriving under that. Ironically, it's the stress that can kill you, that can also heal you. Welcome to the Body, Mind and Power podcast. I'm your host, Seamland, and today we have a special guest on the show, Ori Hofmeckler, the author of The Notorious Warrior Diet. If you want to know how to take advantage of stress and how to adapt to it, then follow me and let's delve into the world of stress adaptation. Do you want to know what it is? Body, Mind Empowerment. Get stronger, faster, smarter quicker, friendlier, more helpful, more driven. Everything the body needs. Control your mind. It's an honor to have you here, Hori, and uh, welcome to the show. My pleasure. Uh, in, in, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Uh, your biography says that uh, you were in the military during the early parts of your life. How has the army service influenced your interest in this type of research? Um, I think that... Um, Early on in this period, I already I start to experience what survival means in practice and how the body reacts under extreme condition that you usually don't experience. And um, I start to, um, through trial and error, I start to reach some conclusion which initially led me that there is a method that if you follow a protocol that if you follow properly um you're gonna handle stress physical nutritional or even emotional way superior to regular protocol that if you didn't know what to do you probably would have follow means um we basically must change our routine in response to stress. We don't need always to think about it. Uh, we have today, I know that we have an inner program, science already recognizes it, that is very, very alert and designed to help us respond to stress. But when this is happening, multiply other mechanisms are activated in the body that literally transform your body to become resilient to stress, adapt and improve. Mm. This very mechanism, this very system, it's what if it's part of the evolutionary process that help organism, not only low organism, high organism, mammals, animals and human survive in a world that is pretty stressful it was stressful still stressful mm -hmm. so early on i learned that during time of extreme physical stress the last thing that you need is to eat mm. and um I, I personally start to experience that um, I, I started my first experience with intermittent fasting but at that time i realized that when i am in a during time sometimes 10 hours at a time of physical drills i should minimize my eating because it will be extremely counter effective mm. and since then i started to improve this method um now it's a point and i'll finish my point yeah we respond to stress but there is a, this program that allows us to respond to stress there is no reason we shouldn't practice it every day even in time that we are less stressful it is so beneficial for us it is so beneficial for other animals and other organisms that we need to learn from that in fact they, you're probably aware of the evidence, but then you put every single organism on this planet on a nutritional stress, less calories or intermittent fasting, mm -hmm. there is a major improvement in all the aspects of their biology, 
In fact, some organisms and some small animals have been shown to double their lifespan under certain kind of stressor. That's exactly my point. We need to learn from that and we need to apply to our lifestyle today. Mm. Yeah, like you mentioned that life itself is a constant process of adapting to stress. Living organisms, they replicate themselves under, you know, the, uh, the pressures of natural selection and so on. But uh, in li living in this society, we don't experience these kinds of stressors anymore and we have to, you know, voluntarily create those situations ourselves. So uh, what led you from writing The Warrior Diet to your latest book, The Seven Principles of Stress? The Seven Principles of Stress is actually a continuation of a long time of exploration in the area of human survival in today's world. You said it very correctly. We live in a society that not only don't help you understand what is your biology, in fact, it's counter-effective to your biology. Um, look at our food chain and the food industry today is one of the worst things that we can do to ourselves. Mm. If we were another species, I would say if we were animals, I would say that our food industry is a manifestation of animal cruelty. Mm. The way people eat today, if we were another animal, I, I wouldn't even feed, I, I, we have rescued dogs here and cats, I wouldn't feed my animals this way. Wow. It is cruelty. So we have a system that have, have designed to give us a lot of pleasure. Mm -hmm. We freed ourselves from hunger and hardship. Uh, people can have almost anything they want. Technology give us incredible innovations of how to make life easier and easier. But in this process, we are losing our ability to survive the way nature intended. Mm -hmm. Technology is so strong today that evolution cannot keep up with it. We no longer exposed to the primary biological stresses that make our species thriving and evolving. So evolution has no reason today to keep us thriving. Look, you said it right. Nature, natural selection, can only work on species under stress mm. because stress trigger this mechanism that make the survival of the fittest stay alive and the weak mm. move out, dispose. That's what improve all species gene pools. It has nothing to do with this when it's coming human, nothing to do with the color of the skin or with any kind of primitive theories. It really has to do with the survival of the fetus. However, today the rules are changed. We live now in a society where the game is the survival of the unfittest. Hmm. So even though people today manage to somehow stay alive, perhaps even longer than thousands of years ago, it's due to interference of drugs and chemicals. We are not doing better. We actually age much faster than ever before. Um, there are reports right now about the loss of rep reproductivity of humans. This is very concerned. The vast majority of the Western world already overweight or obese or diabetes. Yeah. Sure. And Again, if it was any other species, you would say this species already show first sign of species and dangerous species. So something needs to be done. As for your question, I was doing a research on, still have been doing the research on an area which I call stress activated food. Mm -hmm. um, I was very intrigued by the idea that stress organism, of course, are healthier, but they must produce molecules that make them healthier. And it's true in biology, 
we always have signals that activate gene or pathway that make us better or worse. My theory was that if <clears throat> being lean, stress, active, it's good for mama or animals, it must be good for the food that we eat too, but nobody is talking about it. What happens if a chicken is not a chicken, a beef is not a beef, and a plant is not a plant if you don't understand how healthy they are and they sh the same thing apply to them. So I do believe that we evolved to thrive from stress food. It's the healthiest food. Think about a big dinosaur. You're a big dinosaur. You're going to go and eat some humans here, okay? T-Rex. Must go faster. What would you eat, the obese or the lean? It's a good question. Sorry for the explanation, for the example. <laughs> no, but it's a good metaphor, yeah. When you want to strive, there is already an evidence that stress foods, stress PC, produce compounds that help them survive the stress down. And it could be heat shock, cold shock, lack of fertilization, lack of food. And um, this compound, uh, or protection against predation, this compound in many cases are even plant toxic, but they have shown to not only protect the plant, they've shown to extend the life of animals mm -hmm. and humans that consume them. So while I was involved with this research, we came with some very crazy uh, studies proposal and defining was so stunning that it drove me to write this book. I was not planning to write The Seven Principles of Stress, but I thought that people should know. Somebody should try to map this area of stress. What can you do to extend your life and enjoy better quality of life by taking advantage of stress rather than falling victim to stress? Mm. Yeah. Stress has, yeah, stress has two sides. Ironically, it's the stress that can kill you, that can also heal you. Mm -hmm. But you need to know exactly where is the threshold point where stress is beneficial and when is it harmful. And that including almost everything you think. Toxins like cyanide can benefit you. Heavy metal, we evolve to live in a world full of heavy metal. So this kind of stress under certain threshold is essential for us, okay? Even MSG in small amount is beneficial. There is evidence to that. Every toxin that we are afraid of on a very small amount can benefit. When it's in excess, it can have, that's part of the principle of homesis. Mm. Homesis is a process of nature, that exposure to low level stress promote resi resiliency or resistance to high level stress. We know that and we use it in many times. That's how we learn in school. That's how you learn how to use computers. That's how you even do your podcast. You start by small step to becoming more and more experienced in what did you do and you can handle much more than you started with. You go to the gym first time. If you're going to lift 200 pounds, it may crush your bones. But if you build gradually with your muscle and bone, you will be able to handle this weight. So this is a very important principle of nature. But I just gave you example on the surface. This mm. principle apply to every cell and tissue in your body, to your whole organism. And there are ways to take advantage of it far beyond what we were taught. Indeed, it's truly one of those uh, crucial aspects of, of you know, being or even just living and you know, having, having amazing experiences as well. So what are the seven principles of stress? Well, I believe that Principle number one, that exposure to low level stress promote, I just talked about it, adaptation and resistance to high level stress. And you really need to understand that a sudden exposure 
to intense stress when there are no people can crush you down. So it's very important to understand that. And there are a lot of aspects for that. Um, for in times that you need to prepare yourself to handle a big crisis, you better start to prepare yourself. Don't keep yourself vulnerable. Mm. Um, I just want to let you know that recent research have shown that stress hormone, your own stress, those that are blamed for cause inflammation and binge eating and edema, water retention, mortal disease, inflammation can lead to even cancer. There is no evidence that if you condition your body to endure stress, all kind of stress, uh, nutritional especially, and physical, your glucocorticoids, which are the main group of your stress hormone, that usually have a delay reaction, you know, they sometimes take a day or a few days for them to react. Mm -hmm. um, your body start to upgrade them to the level that they, they can instantly help you respond to the story, to respond to stress and keep you resilient without panicking, without reaching adrenal fatigue, if you condition yourself prior. I believe that at any time, not just in primordial time, it's our duty to ourselves or to our kids to help them condition themselves by exposure to low level stress, whether it's physical or nutritional, just in case if a crisis happens in your life, it generally happens. So that leads me to the second principle, to maximize resiliency to stress. You really want to condition yourself, expose yourself to both nutritional and physical stress. Exposure to nutritional physical stress, such as intermittent fasting and exercising while fasting, will maximize the, your resiliency to stress. Mm. And with this in mind, it continues with the next principle that exposure to a low level toxin can create resiliency against toxicity by the same toxin. Mm. You can train your body to become resilient to certain kind of toxin and actually benefit from that. It's already been known mm. that snake charmers are resilient even to the poison of, of snakes. Um, we, we got such a phobia of microbes and toxin yeah. and everything that we sterilize ourselves rather than being challenged. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's part. And now, I'm, I'm just trying to reach probably the key, one of the key principles, or the key principle, is that energy deficit is the ultimate overruling trigger of hormesis. Nothing can condition you better to resist stress than depletion of energy. This is why you benefit from exercise, and this is why you benefit from fasting. It's the principle of depleting your energy. However, we live in a world that teaches us to do exactly the opposite. We need energy. Look at the industry around you. You've been trained to eat breakfast and then a power, they call it power snack here, lunch here. Yeah. Uh, most of our food and the thing that people like most are based on fast releasing energy food, carbohydrates and sugar. Just name it. Show me a modern human who doesn't like sweets, cookies, uh, cakes, snacks. Mm. And I'm giving up my case. So we live in a system that constantly load energy in your system, which and, and thereby inhibit, okay? Mm. Inhibit 
your resistance to stress. So stress principle, the next principle, the energy deficit is the key trigger. It's so powerful that at, on a maximum depletion, when you deplete your glycogen, you're extremely resilient to anything, including sugar itself. And the state of glycogen your depletion, your body can even handle sugar. Yeah. You're extremely powerful position. That's one of my recommendations why you should follow intermittent fasting and exercise while fasting. At least earn several hours per day, if not six or even eight or even ten, where this awesome mechanism of your adaptation to stress is percolating in your system. Maybe we'll talk about it later on in a few words, but just think that your heat shock response is to, to search and destroy under this condition of energy depletion. Every week and sick cell and cancer cell has been digested and recycled out of your system. Mm. If you're already over the age of 40, 50, 60 or 70, you can still rejuvenate tissue by waking up dormant stem cells that regenerate themselves to create new tissues, including in the brain. This is an incredible phenomenon. Yet, most people, the average Joe today in Estonia and in LA and in Europe fail to activate the system. If they ever experience it, it's maybe a minute a day because they just exercise and then they eat immediately after it's gone. Okay. In my book, I really show people how to take advantage of it. So it's not just about leaning down, which is important. It's very important. It's about giving your body the chance to sustain itself in peak shape, biological shape, and sustain itself young. The next principle is the opposite. It shows you that energy loading, excess energy, inhibit your ability to resist stress. This is what I just discussed. Every study show that excess of energy activate mechanism, growth mechanism that perhaps, not perhaps, they are pretty beneficial as you're young, as you grow, growing organisms need to have access, need to activate this mechanism, growth mechanism, mTOR in particular. But when you reach adulthood, overactivation of this growth mechanism, overactivation, created a very adverse situation of unneeded growth in a non-growing body. This is a recipe for aging and cancer. We live today in a system that constantly encourages us to age ourselves, to be prone to inflammatory diseases and cancer. Yes, I can say it clear, and science already recognizes it. It's been established in the data. Put inflammation here, it leads to disease and cancer. Mm. In fact, put the time factor, every tissue, inflamed tissue over time, can become cancerous. Mm. So we cannot allow this process to happen. And, and yes, mTOR, the growth mechanism, play a big role. It drives the aging process, it drives cancer, and food, especially high glycemic or excess food, are the factor that stimulate mTOR. Mm. So we are moving to one of the most important principle, stress can only benefit you when it's intermittent. Chronic stress is a killer. It destroys. Many people today do not know, but they are under chronic stress because the body cannot defend itself. It fell to the category of chronic stress. Think about it. We evolved in a world where our very first response to danger or stress is called the fight or flight response. Either we fight, confront the stress, or run away. Every animal needed it, we needed it. The only, and this is a very powerful response. It involved immediate secretion of adrenal and reserve steroid and cortisol, just to encounter swiftly and a very intense life danger. It could be a war condition, a predator, a fire, 
you've got to either fight back or run away. The problem with this system, it is not built for prolonged response. It has to be fast, strong, act. Bushido almost like principle. Mm -hmm. Kill, do or die, yeah. you know? But so as long as it's effective, shot, it's a very effective system. It can help you resolve. But when this system is prolonged, it's destroy your body. The stress hormone fail to do the job. They start to cause inflammation. They start to cause an excess. Um, there's a degradation process in every tissue, including your brain. And when you see people panic, usually it's a sign of dysfunctional fight or flight response. Again, most many people are, are among us don't know that they are chronically overactivating the fight or flight response because they are not conditioned to respond to stress. Exactly. Yeah. The way to, the way to condition you've got to make any stress you're under intermittent, short, not too long, in optimal time. I was the first to create the concept of intermittent fasting in practice in the, my book, The Warrior Diet. I really still insist that intermittent fasting should be only based on a 24-hour cycle, no more than that. When you fast more than 18 hours a day, you may put your body already under chronic stress, in this case, nutritional. There is a huge difference between intermittent stress and chronic stress. One is extremely beneficial, and the other one puts you in a state of exhaustion. You give up, basically. So, stress can only benefit you when it's intermittent. It should never be chronic. Mm -hmm. The last principle is that resiliency to stress, hormesis, promotes virility. That means it delays sexual aging. They, this is one of the most incredible phenomena that science is still struggling, but there is evidence, I show it in my book, that organism who become resilient to stress um, fall into this category of natural selection, they are actually selected to resist sexual aging. In fact, it's more than that. After a threshold of adaptation, let's say I put you right now in a condition that you become extremely resilient, adapt to certain stress, resilient to stress, there was an evolutionary advantage or evolutionary reason why nature turned those who are resilient to stress, resilient to the inhibition of stress on sex. Mm. In general, you're in biology textbook, if you just start to learn biology, you will learn that in mammals, stress inhibit your sex hormones. And of course, there was a reason for that during time of famine or war. It's the last thing that people need is to multiply. Both estrogen and testosterone, um, usually after exercise, supposed to be inhibition of testosterone, and society do not off animals, or human are not supposed to multiply under stress. Mm -hmm. However, after a certain kind of threshold of adaptation, something amazing is happening. And those who manage to adapt can resist this inhibitory of effect of stress on sex, and the opposite is happening. Um, perhaps that's going to explain the phenomenon of the baby boom, of the Second World War mm -hmm. than ever before in history. Um, I show some research of other stress species, like the salmon, for instance, who actually breed and multiply just before they're about to die. I'm talking about the male salmon. Mm -hmm. uh, nature gave them, there was a necessity to give this stress species the ability to resist the inhibitory effect of stress hormones on the sex hormones. These are the seven principles of stress. 
And now the question, how do you combine the two data into a lifestyle without becoming primitive? Mm -hmm. We don't want to get primitive today. We don't want to lose the asset that we own. Yeah. Um, you have incredible knowledge and technology and electronics and incredible data that you can take advantage. And yes, you should enjoy your life being a modern person, man or woman, living in the 21st century, yet you cannot give up on your biology. So we have to find a way to keep our lifestyle and achievement, yet accommodate our biological need and the primal stressor that make up progressing and thriving. Mm. Yeah, wow, you, you kind of put it so beautifully, like, uh, like you said, like it's almost like a vicious cycle of chronic stress causes more stress because, first of all, you haven't been conditioned to adapt to it, and second of all, you're living in an environment that is overstimulating it, so it's, it's this vicious cycle from which it's very difficult to escape from. So, uh, uh, what is what would be like the some of the biological mechanisms of stress adaptation? We already mentioned a few of them, like hormesis and uh, EMP and the uh, mTOR. I think I, I think I already mentioned, but there is of course more than that. There are certain kind of genes which are called uh, stress response gene or longevity genes. Um, and there are several of them. The most notable one is the AMPK, which is a pathway that inhibit mTOR and extend life. Without AM, AMPK right now, there, there were two pathways. There is the sirtuin and MMPK. Both of them are critically important. The sirtuin pathway, um, they found out that there's certain kind of nutrients, part of my research, by the way, activate this longevity pathway. But the siltuin is being activated by its called stack siltuin activating compounds, okay? Um, and resveratrol, resveratrol is uh, one of the most notable among them, the most research nutrient. However, it is now known that AMPK is the king of the longevity or stress response pathway. It just literally transform your body. Your body is very sensitive to energy. It's the thing that it's sensitive more. So as depletion of energy take your body, let's say you fast and you exercise, your cells start to be depleted of ATP molecule and the concentration of AMP molecule, a single, um, you know, um, molecule, it loses two phosphorus into um, adenos AM, AMP molecule, okay? Adenosine monophosphate. So, uh, when the cell sense increase the AMP, it activates AMPK. AMPK is basically um, an enzyme, a kinase enzyme that literally transform your body. It's a pathway that inhibit mTOR, increase energy utilization, signal your body over time to shift from carb to fat fuel. Um, you continue it long enough and smart enough, you're gonna shift to ketonic fuel, which is the ideal survival fuel. Uh, there's massive research to show the benefit of ketone fuel, especially on your brain, but now they're finding out it can serve very well the muscle as well. It's like evolution already evolved us to all these mechanisms. We just don't take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. And so activation of AMPK, in my opinion, is critical on a daily basis. Starvation and hardship, I, I, who want to be under that pain? Well, your body want to be under that pain because it's thriving under that. And it's never too late to experience. You don't need much. You just need to be smart. And yes, you can compensate every. I believe that the ideal ketonic diet is not that. I'm not talking about the medicinal diet to help with seizure. I'm talking about the ketogenic diet. It should be intermittent. It should be intermittent. It should. There is no reason to keep the body chronically under any condition. Mm. But if you put your body under good catharsis 
for several up to 10 hours a day, you're doing a miracle. It's not just a fuel. Uh, your heat shock protein system is being activated. I just say this system rejuvenate your body. There is some research I made with scientists in Europe who did some experiment, not good ones, by injecting heat shock protein coming from heat shock bacteria to humans who suffer from alopecia, uh, chronic degenerative diseases, and inflammatory. And I tell you, this heat shock managed to heal people in a way, you see the picture, that no traditional medicine could do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying how safe it is or that's a different quality. The, the point is, you can activate the system in your own body. It's ready to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, let alone the fact that there are transcription factors that keep, it's not just activation of stem cells, not just longevity, there are transcription factor on the energy deficit, such as the PGC, for instance, that basically transform your muscle, transform your brain tissue, increase mitochondrial density. Mitochondria is the energy furnace mm -hmm. in the cell. So, you can be lean, look very lean and normal and healthy, and nobody know that your muscle can generate sometimes five to ten times more stamina, durability, and survival power than a big hawk bodybuilder who doesn't have this property. Somebody can develop huge muscle, but the, ma the beef is cheap. It doesn't have the quality of a lean muscle that was biologically evolved as nature intended with a high mitochondrial destiny. It's a muscle, there's a difference between muscle for a bodybuilding show and muscle designed for survival. Huge difference. One is designed to just show you in the mirror how big you are and maybe have some incredible strength for a few seconds at a time. And the other one is designed for longevity, incredible survival, and incredible durability. All that transformation in your body that make you biologically fit as nature intended and the energy deficit happen when you put condition in your body properly to resist stress. The things you just mentioned, like uh, based on the information you just gave us, it's, it's like the modern fitness industry is actually killing people with, with their exercise regimes and the nutrition they provide. So what are, what are the things they might be doing most, mostly wrong? Well, the first thing that's wrong is not even defining the goal. Why are we doing it? Is it because we want to be less fat? Okay. Is it because we want to look better? Okay. But what else? So the fitness industry is not defined and the athletic and sport industry is not fully defined either. At least here they know one thing. The goal, maximum performance. We want to score. We want to score in the Olympics. We want to score. We want to be the best. So many people are ready to die for that. They take story, they take this, they do that. The definition of biological fitness is very simple and clear. Better survival, longer life. And better vir and longer virility, of course. Mm. So survival, virility, longevity. That's the meaning of biological fitness. The approach of this and normal fitness is very different. One normal fitness is about a visual, is about building muscle, it's about eating to build and exercising to pump. Biological fitness, when you exercise, you exercise to deplete. Exercise is generally intense and short, it will activate all your body, basically, ideally with fight or flight activity. 
I developed this system, it's called a CFT, Control Fatigue Training. People can see it on defensenutrition.com. Um, but if you do martial art or you do anything, uh, boxing, karate, whatever, you're really activating moves that are inherent to our species. The point is, biological fitness must incorporate smart exercise and short exercise routine with fasting at the same time. Your goal is not maximum performance. Your goal is maximum life. It's a huge difference. You want to performing while under nutritional stress that will condition your body to start improving the muscle tissue quality. If you just pump iron and eat before and after, you're going to gain but not improve the muscle quality. You're going to stay with the type to be fast muscle, which are fast glycolytic. They cannot utilize fat fuel. And a body who cannot shift from carb to fat fuel or ketonic fuel is an inferior body. It's, you don't want to have a body like this. And it's not just with us. It's in all mammals. So I'm telling you, bodybuilders, if you ever consider to benefit from ketogenic diet, change your way because you're not built for that. Mm -hmm. Think about the benefit of your life, not the short-term benefit of how just you look at the mirror. And in my opinion, aesthetic is personal. I think the lean and biologically fit people are more attractive than the overpump people. And as they get older, they become even more attractive. When was the last time you saw a bodybuilder that looked great when he's old, unless he changed his way? Yeah. If you saw something, let me know without taking steroids or with. So I, ha I really put a chapter in my book about biological fitness and show to people in details how to redefine the concept of being fit. And we cannot fight nature. We have a destiny which is much more profound and exciting than what we hear or read in fitness magazine. And fitness has been designed by nature millions of years before even life came about. And we need to respect that and give ourselves the chance to excel. Most people fail to do that, most likely, and they're good people because they don't know. I think diet is the critical element, the critical element. You will transform your body, rest assured, to a level that you can't even imagine. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Like the one, I think one of the biggest problems is that the, like you mentioned, nutrition and diet, which actually, over, over, I've heard of a lot of rumors or some new research is showing that overstimulating the mTOR pathway is uh, responsible for a lot of aging and cancer growth as well. So is, is, it, do you, is this kind of a true thing or do you agree with it? As I said, I'm absolutely good. There's no doubt about it. Scientists and researchers all over the world today are stunned with this phenomenon. Um, I don't agree with there is line of research to find one molecule that can inhibit mTOR and save life. There is no one molecule because the pharmaceutical industry is interested to, to find one molecule or one drug because that's how they make the billion gazillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, they are paying researchers to find, but both pharmaceutical industry and the scientific community already know that overactivation of mTOR um, shorten life, um, drive the aging process, and cause cancer. And the opposite, inhibition of mTOR is the key uh, pathway to living longer. Mm -hmm. So what, what would be like some, some uh, nutritional examples of this inhibiting mTOR? You mentioned these stress-activated foods. Do they have this kind of an effect? Uh, you just nail it now. One of the most tragic things, and uh, the reason why I wrote this book, is the total misunderstanding and priority of our nutrition. You look here in America about the FDM, I'm sure in Estonia you have similar thing. 
you have this food pyramid, people run, okay, so maybe carbs should be low and maybe carbs should be on the top. It doesn't matter. It's still about vitamin, mineral, essential, and protein, essential nutrient, and the rest, and fiber. And, and let me tell you something. Some of the most critical nutrient to our survival simply when it was thrown under the bus. Uh, we don't learn about them. There is no knowledge. Maybe perhaps because this concept of hormesis is so paradoxical that people don't want to learn about it. And drug companies cannot make money with us. But we evolved in a food chain probably 10,000 years ago and before that was full of nutrients that are no longer part of our food chain. And this nutrient come from stressed food. And these nutrients are not necessarily antioxidant or vitamin, but they are more important to our survival than every vitamin you can see out there. They are the one that trigger the pathway AMPK, or at least many of them, or some of them, uh, your longevity, they are the one that can mimic the effect of exercise on your body and fasting, and they can do all the action that you sweat today to reach while you even sleep. So think about it. A person who exercise today, if he's smart, he can benefit from the exercise impact for an hour or several minutes a day, or maybe several hours a day, but that's it. But think about nutrients that mimic the effect of uh, percolating in your system 24 hours a day, activating the pathway that you want to activate, transforming your body, making you lean, keeping you young, activate your each shock protein, percolating in your system while you're even asleep. It is unconceivable what we are missing. So my job to, was to reintroduce back this nutrient to the diet. Some of the most important nutrients of this group uh, appears in bark of trees, rhizomes, peats mm. and peels, dietary waste that we waste, we don't eat. People want to learn about it. They can go to my website, uh, defensenutrition.com and look for SAF, longevity, stress activated food, longevity, soft longevity, read the research, it's stunning, it's just stunning. Some of these nutrients like berberine for instance, have been found to be more effective to reverse diabetes than the drug metformin, mm. okay? Wow. So instead, and, and, and some of them are very potent inhibitors of mTOR, but they are no drugs. It doesn't cost you that much. They are all natural, yet the pharmaceutical industry want a patent or there's no patent on nature. Yeah. My job was just to show you what to do in order to thrive. So a good protocol of intermittent fasting, going for a frugal simple food, and stress activated soft nutrient could do to bring you a long way. One more thing, I just want to let you know. Another thing we don't know, that stress food, especially berries, have an amazing capacity with a nutrient, so-called anti-nutrient, to reduce blood sugar and reduce blood lipid after you eat. Mm -hmm. That's something that people who follow ketogenic diet should understand. If you're Postprandial, let me mean postprandial mean after meal, elevation of blood sugar and blood lipid is the number one factor, contributing factor to the obesity and diabetes epidemics that infect our society. Mm. When people eat several meals a day and every time postprandial elevation of blood sugar yeah. or lipid is accumulating, it basically makes them sick and old. And prone, susceptible for cancer. Mm. But we evolved from a food chain so rich in nutrients that actually reduce, and that could be even sweet fruits like blueberries, or strawberries, or raspberries. They have nutrients that reduce blood sugar. Mm -hmm. 
instead of elevating. I'm now in a trial. I mean, I'm, I, I think part of the solution that's what it brings me now is to create products that will eventually conquer the bottom of the junk food chain. Mm -hmm. I believe that today we can innovate cookies, mm -hmm. and granolas, and even ice cream that are not going to be just less unhealthy. They're going to be absolutely healthy and perfectly fit this theory. Mm. Solution we need practical product. People cannot change the way just on theory alone. Very few are. Mm. We must find a way to help people practice the right way. And those who have a sweet tooth, just learn how to make your choices. You can still enjoy whole fruits, especially berries, and benefit incredibly from that, or certain kind of herbs. Again, you cannot go wrong with this if you know what to do. Yeah, it's exactly like these people, they simply want to have this, some sort of a taste taste preference and if, if the uh, they don't they won't care whether that they they, get, they can satisfy their sweet tooth from something healthy or something unhealthy as long as they get their cravings done so if we can create these products that have these uh, health benefits then why not take advantage of it you have like a line of products out uh, you're uh, working on as well with with a similar purpose in mind can you give us some examples of that Currently, we didn't launch, it's still an R&D, even though some of the product finished the R&D, and it's very exciting. Again, we managed to create uh, cookies that can compete with the taste and texture of regular junk cookies, but they have nothing, no sh added sugar, no flour. Your mm -hmm. body gets very good quality protein, some of them vegan, some of them are done with some good quality grass-fed dairy. I hope soon, to be able to let people know uh, where to get that. Um, I see it as a good cause. Um, I could launch it before, I'm, I'm still waiting, but I can tell you the truth, I myself already enjoy it. It's really amazing uh, that you can eat something that gives you the pleasure, almost like uh, a guilty pleasure, mm -hmm. including an amazing chocolate that we develop that eliminate all sugar, anything else. The chocolate itself, the cocoa bean, is one of the greatest soft nutrients. It has so many uh, health quality, it's just health quality, life extending quality, neuroprotective quality. So it's coffee. Um, so the addition of sugar to chocolate just make it adverse. And um, I'll, I'll let you know, people should go to defensenutrition.com and we'll update you soon. And people can find a way to really enjoy and drop, I hope, to be able to show alternative that people can drop the junk once and for all. Mm. Change their life. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I'm actually, start, we're starting to reach the end of the show as well. And uh, I would like to ask you my uh, one of my last questions from you, which is, uh, what would be like this one, one uh, practical tip or advice or some sort of a habit or practice that you would recommend people implement into their lives to improve their body and their mind? Um, the number one step, the number one step, go to intermittent fasting. Stop eating frequently during the day. That's the most important thing. Everything else will follow through. If you can handle gradually, three, five hours of fasting, or just minimize food to berries alone or something light if you can take full fast, it's still fine. Create a negative energy balance. If you can they take your walking days and turn it into under eating or fasting day, you're already a giant step ahead. Everything else will follow through. That means your body is already start to condition itself. You can find many more details, of course, in my book, um, including practical advice for people who want to lose weight, people who engage in binge eating and cannot stop it, you know, 
I know many people like this. We have a lot of our great guys, great girls. They just, once they start, they cannot stop. I show very effective a method that within second, natural, not abrasive, to stop it. How to deal with different kind of crisis, including depression. How to deal with worst case scenario crisis, financial or emotional or loss of somebody. What can you do uh, step by step? Science is there, practical advice is there, the protocol is there. Um, my book, The Seven Principles of Stress by North Atlantic Book is available at Amazon.com. My website, DefenseOfCreation.com, you can look for, again, soft longevity, stress activated food, if you want to see the science and what to do. And um, that's it for now. I'll be happy to discuss with you whatever comes. Mm, yeah. Wow, yeah. I, I've read your book as well, like, and it's very scientific. It's all based on real research, and the, the tips are also very practical, and you definitely learn a whole lot about your physiology and how to become a better human being in general. So, Ori, I want to thank you for coming onto the show, and uh, I definitely wish you... All the best in your research and uh, future projects as well. Thank you very much for reaching out to me and having me. It was my pleasure. And let's stay in touch, okay? Definitely, yes. Yeah. Good look. job. Thank you. All right, thanks for watching this episode. Make sure you leave us a review on iTunes and other social media platforms. Thanks for watching. Click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Stay hormetic, stay empowered.